A journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Well, that's what they say anyways. You've tuned into Western New York Trout Pod, the podcast of the Western New York chapter of Trout Unlimited. My name is Jim Jowsey, and I'm a member, board member, and volunteer for the chapter. We'll be talking about countless angling and cold water conservation topics of interest to folks here in Western New York and beyond during our journey. I've got a short list of topics that'll knock your socks off. I figured for our first episode, I'd set the stage for the journey and talk to our current president, Joe Morgan. Joe gives a great overview of who we are, what we do, why it's important, just how incredibly easy it is to get involved, and why you don't even have to fish to get involved. So let's just get to it. Enjoy. All right, I'd like to welcome to the show Joe Morgan. Joe is the current president of the Western New York chapter of Trout Unlimited and the man who's currently steering the ship. Welcome, Joe. Uh, Good to be here, Jim. Thank you. Seeing as this is a new project for us, I was hoping to start it off with a little bit of information about Trout Unlimited, specifically the um, a little bit of information about our chapter, you know, the things we do, the things we've done, um, just to kind of give people a starting point as we kind of go on this journey here, um, as far as, you know, what we do, what the, um, you know, what our part of the world here has to offer. Um, so I figured, you know, we'll start it off with you. We'll kind of talk to you about... Um, you know, this area about Western New York Trout Unlimited. Um, How long has the chapter been around? The chapter has been around going on 55 years. It was started back in 1970 by a group of uh, anglers that, um, you know, obviously were were interested in in enhancing and protecting the resource. And it's pretty pretty interesting if, if, if people got a chance they can they can go on our, our website and there's a newsletter from December 1970 and it talks about you know the 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 club and and, and different uh, projects that were going on and um, there's also and I don't think it's on our it may be on our website but I know it was on it's in one of the newsletters uh, buried in there is that in 1970, in 71, the Western New York Trout Unlimited did their first project, um, and it was on Wiscoy Creek, what we um, above Hillside Road, which is part of the No Kill now. And it's interesting because they made Trout Magazine, um, and, and there's a whole um, file or PDF file with the article, and and it's pretty interesting. And you, you'll see a lot of parallels between what we're doing now and what what you know, the, the guys were doing back in, in the early 70s. Um, and it's just kind of grown from there. And, we, you know, I don't know how many members were, you know, originally there. I know for a fact that Gordon Dietrich, uh, he's one of the original members. And he still, uh, he still attends uh, our meetings. So, you know, Gordon's probably got a good idea of how everything, you know, played out in those early years. And, you know, just looking at some of the, the stuff on, in, in that newsletter, it looks like they started out meeting in Hamburg, um, I think in some members' homes, and then they moved on to, um, I don't know if it was Hamburg High School. And then over the years, the, the, the chapter just has kept growing and growing. And um, I think it's a testament to, like, the Western New York um, anglers and, and conservation uh, minded folks, uh, you know, that just want to protect, you know, all the resources and, and, um, you know, fishing opportunities that, that the area offers. Uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we've, we've basically kept everything going, you know, the meeting places, like I mentioned, started out in a home over the years, they moved out to the, um, uh, a couple of places that I'm aware of then when I first started to, to, to attend meetings was the uh, Donovan Post and Cheek to Waga. And then most recently, we're at the Orvis store in um, uh, the Eastern Hills Mall. And, and, and that really worked out well for us. And, uh, you know, with, with increased attendance and, uh, you know, I can't say enough about the folks at Orvis, uh, Adam and uh, his crew there uh, being so welcoming and, and, and just, you know, 
allowing us to 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 get the message out i guess yeah um, they're definitely they're definitely very they're they're great to us yeah yeah and you know there's been a, you know we're you know i always say you know we're, this organization it was built on on you know previous generations and um you know there's unfortunately like some of the names have have kind of probably just faded away but there's still some some you know longtime members you know the Tom P Bubars, uh, Chuck Godfrey's that have really just kind of um, kept things going and, and 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 over the years there's been a variety of of the who's who I guess in in Western New York angling that in one way or another were involved with Trout Unlimited either through you know being members or on our boards and, and some of the names I, I know Rick Custage did it um, Vince Tobia. Nick Pianessa. So these are, you know, this has been a, a an ongoing, I guess, organization that has just uh, really grown through the years. And, and I think we're in a good place now. Now, um, if we I, got I, our start, if we started in, in 1970 or 1971, I mean, the organization itself has only been around since what, 59? Yeah. In, in 1959, a group of anglers, uh, one of them was uh, George Griffith. Um, as in the Griffith Nat fly uh, on the banks of the Osable River, and might be pronounced Osable, depends where you're at, yeah, and how it's pronounced. But th- but they started uh, the you know grassroots organization, and I think it just spread out through the country, and um and and, and it made its way to New York about eleven years later. So, and you know it, it just keeps growing and growing, and uh, I think it's you know wonderful that it, that things keep you know, carrying on, especially their legacy. Because like I said, we, you know, we stand on, on the shoulders of giants in, in, in my, uh, you know, opinion. I also think that that says a lot about the, about the quality of angler and the quality, you know, quality of conservationist in this area, you know, to have picked up on that so early. I mean, only 11 yeah. years, 11 years from its founding. And, you know, we've already got a chapter in Western New York. Yeah. And, and, and it's been continuous for the last 55 years. Awesome. Well, now, what do you think the big difference is? I mean, because we, we've had these discussions before, you know, this club is more of a fishing club. This club, club is more of a conservation club. I mean, we have friends in this area, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's the, the, the walleye club or different fishing clubs or fly fishers international. I mean, there's so much crossover, you know, and, and I think that's great to see, but um, what do you think, what do you, what do you feel the difference between, you know, trout unlimited, you know, and other outdoor organizations, you know, in the area, um, what do you think the differences are? Well, I, I think, first of all, it, it, there's a misconception. I don't, I don't know if that's a good term. Trout Unlimited is really a conservation aid uh, organization. And, you know, if you looked at the mission statement for TU National, you know, it goes something like to preserve and protect and enhance cold water fisheries and, you know, their habitat. But I think where we, we where it's unique for us too is we we've, we've drawn in a, a group of anglers and probably some conservationists but i would be willing to bet probably 99 percent of our members are fishermen and i, I think you know they, they have a vested interest in 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 preserving and 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 improving you know all our local trout streams and steelhead tribs and, and stuff like that and it, it's kind of a mix uh, of, 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 you know, like that conservationist slash angler. And, and another thing, it, it, for whatever reason, you know, everyone kind of thinks that Trout Unlimited is just a fly anglers organization. Now, granted, we probably 90% of our members or so are fly fish in some form or fashion, but we welcome and we have all kinds of trout fishermen, whether they're bait fishermen, uh, spin fishermen, and, um, you know, center pinners, you know, we're all, it's the common goal is to protect and enhance, you know, these streams. And and I think, you know, it, it brings everybody together. I definitely agree with that. I, the one, the one thing I, I'm really digging lately as far as meetings and the things that we do is, you know, we're, we're bringing in some younger, some younger anglers. You know, and I, I think that's just, that's great. 
Yeah, it is. They're the future. I mean, the young. I I I love the younger anglers. I think you know they're obviously came up a different way than than me and and other older members. You know, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have um, the social media. When we learned the fish and got into conservation, it was pretty much reading books, trying to get a hold of people that had common interests that were willing to mentor you. And now it's just, um, it's just grown. I, I watched this sport just grow, uh, you know, like exponentially over, over the last 30, 40 years, especially after the river runs through, it came out. And, you know, I, I really like talking and, 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 and fishing with the younger guys. Cause you know, there's some excellent tires. They're, they're, they're excellent. The fishermen and gals, and, you know, like I said, they're the future. And I agree with you, Jim. I see them more at the meetings. And, you know, we're trying to, to attract that younger crowd because, let's face it, I mean, at some point we're all going to age out and it's, it's everything's going to be in their hands. So, you know, it's, it's really a really good thing to see. Well, speaking of, of meetings and stuff, so explain how this works, um, uh, how the board works when we meet. Um, you know, how can, how can folks get involved? Okay. So we, we basically have two meetings a month, uh, from the month of September through June. And I'll start with the board meetings. We meet the second Tuesday of every month at 7 PM at Sorrentino's restaurant in the village of Williamsville. Um, that is our, our board meeting and every member is invited to come to submit ideas, topics they want us to review, discuss, we welcome that. We're not a closed organization. Um, we've had you know members come in. We've had some people that were interested in presenting some ideas to us. We've invited them to our meetings. So the meetings are you know are, the board meetings are on a, on a, that first Tuesday. We have a, a group. Of, I think we're up at maybe nine board members. And then we have officers, we have a, you know, president, vice presidents, you know, secretary and a treasurer and, um, and we have committee chairs. So, you know, everyone has a role and, you know, we will meet, we'll, we'll bring topics up. We'll discuss them as a group. We'll, we'll decide, you know, if it's something that we think is beneficial to the chapter, and then we'll take a vote on it. And sometimes things pass and sometimes they don't. But I think everyone has the same goal in mind, you know, to, to uh, you know, enhance and improve the, the waters and the fishing throughout uh, Western New York. Now, years ago, they used to have the board meetings or the business portion of the meetings that are general meetings. And, you know, for a lot of folks that are just coming to hear presenters or just want a night out, you know, they don't want to get caught in a minutia of talking about, you know, business and stuff. So the club decided to, to break that away and then have a separate general meeting. That is the last Tuesday of each month. And that runs from September through May. The board meetings go an extra month in June. We don't meet in December. We have a Christmas party like we just did. And we meet, and this is a critical for people that are, are listening. And you know, Jim, we've been we've been promoting this the best we could. Starting this month, our meetings times have moved back from 7 to 6 p.m. at Orvis. So all the general meetings going forward are going to start at 6. We rolled back our fly time to 5 p.m. And um, hopefully everybody will get the message and someone doesn't show up at the end of this month and we're wrapping things up at seven o'clock or quarter after seven. But that's basically how, how things how things work. And, you know, I, I'm really happy with the, the general meetings. You know, we've had a great lineup of speakers on diverse topics. You know, we have our regulars from the DEC and, um, you know, and, 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 I guess COVID changed the way we looked at things um, with, with Zoom and the way it changed the whole world. But, you know, now we're doing, we're recording our meetings and you 
we're putting them up on our YouTube channel. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're moving, moving in that direction. Again, it, it, that's the way the world is working. And that's what younger anglers and folks will, you want to see. We're definitely involved in a lot of different projects. I mean, we, well, uh, women's group, kids group, um, it just, just a lot of different things that we've taken on over the years. Um, what are some of the past projects that you're especially proud of? Well, even, even ongoing. I, yeah, I'm going, I'll break it up to you. There's the, you know, the, the stuff that we're doing now, the stream explorers. I think that's a great program that gets the you know, young, well, people of all ages, you know, an introductory to fishing. And I, you know, hopefully, and I've seen it with some of the repeat um, attendees that, you know, they're, they're getting the bug and, and they're really enjoying the sport. And I think that's how we get some recruitment. So that's a good program. We work with the veterans at the, with Project Healing Waters. Um, and, you know, it, 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 that that's a great program. And I, I and Ken Kanicki does a great job with it. And, you know, I've been to the meetings up there and I can tell you this much, talking with the staff there and, and Ken knows and has told me the veterans really, really look forward to and enjoy, you know, us coming up there. And so, so that's something that the chapter has done for a long time. And, uh, and I know the veterans and, and the VA really appreciates it. And we've done the Batavia one and the Amherst uh, sites too. And then again, like last year, we just, you mentioned earlier, the, the women's fly fishing uh, clinic. That's another, um, good program that we just started up to get more you know diverse anglers and, and members in, into the club so so that's on i guess i'll call it on a, 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 a the social or a, a classroom side and, and then we have i guess something that's really dear to my heart and that's why i joined trout unlimited many many years ago are the stream projects and um, we, you know, we have been working on stream projects, like I mentioned earlier, since 1970, with that very first one that made Trout Magazine. And over the course of the last 50 years, um, there's too many projects and tree plantings to mention. But I will say, in that time period, we've also developed a really good working relationship with the New York Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, you know, it started out with guys like uh, Tom Murray. Some of the older members may re remember him. Uh, went to Joe Evans, Jim Pomeroy, uh, Mike Ermer, and now Scott Cornett. And um, I, I think that's something our chapter can be really proud of because I've had other folks, you know, you know, come up to me and say, well, how do you guys have such a good relationship with, you know, with the New York DEC? And I said, you know, this has been something that's been nurtured for 40, 50 years, and it's just worked out really well. And, and, and we also have good working relationships with the soil and water divisions in the various counties, Wyoming, Cattaraugus. But the stream projects we've done, uh, really, in, and some of it is, is noticed and some of it isn't, but if I had to pick a couple that really stand out for me personally, um, the one that and this was an experiment uh, uh, we knew going in and it was down at allegheny state park and it was on mcintosh brook and i think we did it in 08 or 09 something like that and the idea was to create these 17 different habitat sites to try to improve the brook trout population down there and the results weren't as good as we thought but we knew there was a chance that was the possibility but it was really an interesting project because the rules in Allegheny State Park uh, uh, laid out that we couldn't use any kind of heavy machinery. So all of the, you know, we, we barring the, the park people cutting down trees for us, everything was moved in place old school style with, um, you know, log picks and and stuff like that. And, and we really made some nice pools and everything, but it, it just never, never took off. I remember this, I got to throw this in there because one of our board members, Chuck Campbell, uh, was helping out on that. And he broke it, well, he didn't break, he bent a uh, pry bar. 
and everybody that worked on that project, including the old season guys from the DEC, said, we've never seen anything like that. And I says, I didn't see anything either other than a cartoon because he bent it almost like a pretzel, prying on big, heavy logs. But so <laughs> that's something that I'll always remember. And But the, the, my crown jewel, I guess, personally, is the, um, the North Branch <clears throat> uh, project we did in 2011. And we, we, I should say, the DEC, Wyoming County, TU, took a section of nor the North Branch and installed 53 lunker structures. And for people that don't know uh, about lunker structures, they're basically uh, about eight foot long, three feet deep, maybe 18 inches high. And you put them into the stream bed and cover them with rocks and soil. And it basically creates an artificial undercut bank. Now these are used extensively in the driftless area in, in Wisconsin. Um, and this was the first time that we've really had the type of gradient on the creek to use it. And we put in these 53 structures and um, they worked out, quite, you know, wonderful. They say, um, you know, building a naval come, that's, that's a testament to that. So to this but, day, there's some beautiful fish. So if people are having a hard time um, visualizing it, Basically, what I've seen, I've seen them. Basically, what they look like is really big, super reinforced pallets. Correct. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Made with rock cut um, hemlock or larch. Um, and they, they'll last forever as long as they stay wet. Cool. You know, and then you, know, so we anchor them in the ground, and then, you know, it's it's been what is going on 12, 13 years, and it's um, everything's still intact. And they're still there. They're still there. So, cool. yeah, that would be my favorite. I could awesome. talk for hours on the other ones, Jim, but I you're, really well, enjoyed that. Your, your, your passion is definitely noted, and it's very, very evident, especially, you know, when we see you talk about this stuff at meetings and what have you. Um, what is your personal history, um, you know, with this area as an angler, as a conservationist? You know, I mean, what what got, you know, Joe Morgan interested in, you know, in, in this? I get I get asked that once in a while by some friends and people that I, I wasn't, you know, didn't know as a, as a kid. But, you know, I grew up in Lackawanna, OK, about uh, less than a mile from Bethlehem Steel. Not exactly the trout mecca of western New York. Uh -huh. And I, I guess I, you know, back in the in the 70s and, and some folks may remember this, some may not. One thing that kind of planted a bug in me was a show called The American Sportsman. And it was on every Saturday. And it wasn't like now where you have the outdoor channels and 24-7 YouTube. So it was uh, an outdoor uh, hour show. And, you know, they they would go out and they'd do hunting they, and they would fish. They would fly fish. Kirk Gowdy would have all of these celebrity guests. And they'd be on these beautiful western rivers. And I'd see them fishing. And I says, wow, that's pretty cool. And so then... <laughs> Shortly around that time, my uncle had a hunting camp out in Great Valley. And I remember going down there and uh, fishing one summer evening with my cousins. And I remember seeing trout in the water. We didn't catch one. We had these big old Mitchell 300 reels that we didn't really know what we were doing. But it was just, you know, that kind of got me. It was just a beautiful environment. And then as, as I got older, I, I, I fished a lot in the lakes with my uncle on his boat and and then time goes on we start to be able to drive and my buddies and i start fishing and my cousin mark we started fishing the upper tanawanda creek we went to ishawa we went to mansfield and we were we were minnow fishermen and bait fishermen we took fly rods and just fished salted minnows on them and then everything changed for me it, like in 1986 um, I was working my first job out of school, and I met a what I'll call my mentor, George Michalko, and he kind of he took me under his wing, and introduced me into trout fishing, and you know taught me how to tie flies, and then took me fishing, and kind of mentored me, and as they say, the rest is history, a uh, lifelong um, passion, obsession, whatever you want to call it. 
And uh, so I've, I've been fishing, you know, all the southern tier streams for a long time. Uh, Wizcoy, uh, Lime Lake Outlet, Hosmer, uh, Clear Creek Arcade, Clear Creek Ellington. I, you know, and I and I really cut my teeth on Ishawa Creek with my friend George. And uh, I, I don't fish that as much, but that's kind of how I just got into this. And while I was doing this, I can see the value of Trout Unlimited and improving these places. And uh, I really liked the volunteering. I, you know, I wasn't a, a, a board member. I wasn't, um, you know, nothing more than just the average volunteer that would go out and help on projects. And that's cool. basically how I ended up where I'm at right now, Jim. Okay. Well, yeah. there's a, I mean, there's a ton of fish other than trout in Western New York here with all the, the, the creeks and the, the in the lake and everything else. I mean, what are, what are some of your favorite species to target? Okay. So my number one is brown trout. I love brown trout. There's something about a big brown trout and the way they can survive in streams um, when they get, you know, older and bigger that just, especially the wild fish, a close second is a brook trout. I love brook trout. Uh, I love the environments there they they live in uh, mountain streams and I like everything that goes you know with it the the hiking to the the um, streams hiking along them fishing them and then you know I I I, I really enjoy steelhead fishing um, and I'm more of a, you know I I've never gotten into saltwater fishing I'd like to do that one day I enjoy fishing for smallmouth bass. Um, especially in the creeks with a fly rod or on a pond. But I primarily target, you know, cold water fish. Um, and uh, I, I, and I'll, I'll fish a spinning rod if, if I happen to be, you know, somewhere. And I'm primarily 99% of the time fly fish. But there's a lot you can learn from uh, hardware and, and spin fishermen. Trust me. <laughs> And we're not this elitist group. I mean, everyone's got, we got the common goals and we, 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 we got to stick together and, 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 and fight the good fight, I guess. Well, like I said, I mean, you see a lot of folks, you know, it, it seems like, you know, some of the other, you know, other, other clubs, you know, us included, you know, everybody has their specialties, but, you know, you'll see people from, you know, other organizations at our meetings, you know, and then we've got, you know, board members, you know, for, you know, for TU who are also on the boards of, you know, other organizations yeah. as well. I think, I also think that says a lot, you know, to this, you know, this area. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great area. I mean, you can just like between the, the, the Lake Ontario and uh, Lake Erie, walleye and, and salmon fisheries. I mean, people, I guess it's one of these things you don't know how good you got it because you live here. But there's just so many opportunities and, and guys, especially targeted stuff, non-traditional fly fishing, uh, I guess, fish like carp and, and all, you know, and it's just, it's just really taken off and it's a good thing. I agree. So what are what are some initiatives that we're, we're currently not doing or that maybe we're not doing a lot of that you'd like to see, you know, happen during your tenure as president? Well, I, I, I think a lot of the stuff, it, it, we're doing a great job and we're already, you know, on the path of, of, of doing the stuff. Uh, again, I'll reiterate, the stream explorers, project healing waters, women's fly fishing, social events. I mean, we're doing the fly fishing film tour. Um, you know, before the chapter used to have banquets and it became more, you know, tough to get people to to run them and help out. And so there was a time where we weren't doing them and we didn't have a major fundraiser. So, so that as far as supporting the club, but it, my goal is to get more younger guys and gals and a more diverse membership. And I think we're doing that through some of these, uh, you know, programs I just mentioned in, with the stream explorers and, um, just to keep keep everybody aware, you know that it, the the whole uh, environment we live in is very fragile, and it doesn't take much 
to, to make it go the, the wrong way. And I, I, I think we need to, to you know, and, and however we can do it to engage the next generation to continue, you know, to, to promoting conservation and clean water and clean air. So that's what, uh, you know, I'd really like to see happen. Some At some point, we're just sitting in the, in, in, in the background watching the next generation run things. Well, I think that's a perfect way to end it. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you know you, that you wanted to get out? Um, no, I think let me just think here a minute, Jim. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I just wrote a few notes here. Cool. Yeah, another thing too with with, with one of the items that I what you say about going forward. I'd like to see us, you know, get engaged with, um, you know, disadvantaged kids and stuff, um, and like, and 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 introduce them to 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 the outdoors and fishing. And it maybe doesn't have to be on a trout stream, but just to get them out, uh, because there's a lot of kids, you know, for whatever reason, single family homes, you know, no, you know. And no one, no mentors, no one to, to introduce them to, to the fishing or the outdoors in general. I just, I just think to get them away from the electronics and, and, and stuff. Cause you know, that, that, that's basically, you know, like I've mentioned many times, the future. I'll tell um, you what I, what I've always wanted to do, and maybe we'll get around to doing it this coming yeah. summer. I've always wanted to do something at White Lake. Yeah, right yeah. in the middle, of, right in the middle of Delaware Park, right in the middle of the city of Buffalo. I mean, there's fish in there. I mean, a lot of them aren't pretty fish, but there's fish in there, you know. And there's just I I don't know. I I think there's tons of space, you know, to be able to you know teach some kids how to, you know, cast a fly rod and maybe catch a few fish too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, expose, you know, and and you can only plant the seed, and you know, the goal is to keep them engaged, but. You know, you never know. I, I always say, you know, introduce a, a kid to you know, hunting or fishing, and he may not, you know, do it right now, but 10 years down the line, he might remember that and say, I want to get back into it. And the only other thing I want to say is that to our members, and I know this is like a broken record, you know, you, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody is is welcome to volunteer we we don't turn we don't really care you know nothing if, if you can just help out passing out launches at some of our events or you know you don't feel like you have to on these stream projects and stuff you know lift 50 60 pounds of rock and you're welcome and i and i and i know that if you do show up to any of these events i can guarantee you you're going to walk out of there saying this was a great, you know, fulfilling, you know, uh, venture and, and, and probably want to come back. And, uh, and, and one other thing, I just want to thank all you guys, not only the members, especially the board members, because without you guys, uh, without Chuck Godfrey, you, Jim, Ken, and, and the whole crew there, I mean, everyone's got their niche. I just kind of, keep an eye on things and and i know that you know things are going really well and everyone's got their their area of expertise and, and i greatly appreciate it well it helps that it's a it, it's a blast to do so yep exactly oh, i mean awesome. like like the meetings you know with you and bill jedlika you know running all the social media and that i mean i i don't do that i'm not into social media so you know, that all helps, and that's what's moving the club forward, to be honest with you. I, I peek. I guess they call me a creeper. I get on the uh, Facebook and see what's going on, and and there's a lot of followers, and that's a good thing. Oh, like I said, you're 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 setting the tone. You're steering the boat, and, you know, I, I think as, as board members, I think uh, we appreciate that a lot. Yeah, I just don't want to run to the ground, but so, hopefully not. <laughs> no. Thanks for listening to Western New York Trout Pod, the podcast of the Western New York chapter of Trout Unlimited. 
You can find us on all the major podcast directories like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, and many others. Throw us a like or five-star review where you can. It helps us get the word out and recommend to a friend. We'll connect next time. Thanks again.